Hey, welcome to Belly to Baby. I keep transposing the words baby to belly, but we're belly to baby. <laughs> uh, this is our third week that we're doing the show live on Facebook. We're so excited that everyone is joining us again today. We are joined by Dr. Shelby Dickinson. Yeah, hello. Hello, hi guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to be talking about, um, I think, the all important topic when you're pregnant next to the baby food. Food. Yummy. Gotta eat it. Oh my gosh. I and and gotta eat it is the right words to use because I don't think I have ever experienced hangry, the likes of which I will now. I was in a meeting, it was a noon meeting the other day, and I have some coworkers who are gonna watch this and I swear I don't hold it against any one of you. But I was in a noon meeting and, and we were the pizza that was supposed to be at the meeting was late and I walked in a couple of minutes later. Oh no. Nowhere else. Oh, no. And I was hungry. I truly thought I was gonna burst into tears before one o'clock when it arrived and all was fine with the world again. But I was like, I am here with all of these executives and coworkers and colleagues and I'm bring going it to together, have a bring meltdown. it together. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But in, you say that's pretty normal. Oh, You've been yeah. to it yourself? Yes, twice, twice. You can ask my husband yeah. about hangry. Shelby's hangry again, watch mm -hmm. out. There may have been some food in the center <laughs> console. We'd be driving and uh -huh. he's like, oh, do you need to eat? Oh yeah, where's that food yeah. at? <laughs> yes, always keep snacks handy. That is yeah. the one thing I have learned that if, and last week I showed everyone I, I happened to have a Slim Jim, which is not my snack of choice. It was a random, random Good protein. Situation. Yeah, protein. <laughs> I'm sure it has protein in it, but usually there is some sort of prepackaged snack in the purse, which brings me to my first question yeah. about, you know, when we first, if everybody wants to be as healthy as possible during pregnancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yes, I have Cheez-Its in my purse. And is that okay? Or you should you have the apple instead? I mean, does it... You're, ne you're never, ever going to fault yourself by eating the apple first, okay? Mm -hmm. Fruits and vegetables should be a mainstay, pregnant or not. But every now and again, you need a carb. And I think some of those cravings will lean you towards more um, carbohydrate-based foods. Um, some of that may have to do with the increased hormones in pregnancy. But if you have an apple, go for the apple. If you're mm -hmm. still hungry, you can go for the cheeses. Because your caloric intake or how many calories you need to take in does increase during pregnancy. And how much does it increase? Because we've all heard the, you're not really eating for two exactly. Mm -hmm. Not you're exactly. The quality that two people need, but not necessarily the quantity. So what is the change in caloric need that your body experiences? You really only need an extra 300 calories per day to support a pregnancy, to be honest with you. A little bit more when you're breastfeeding, though. Mm -hmm. 500, maybe skip that workout. Just kidding. Nice. I was going to say, oh, that just made that decision so much easier for so many of us. <laughs> but no, you just need an extra 300 calories a day, so you're not really eating for two. And is that throughout pregnancy? Yeah. That's throughout pregnancy. So even in the third trimester, I, I thought it I thought it went up again. So it doesn't go up again? Well, it kind of does. Mm -hmm. So in general, that's how much. I shouldn't say that's how much extra, but that's how much extra you'll burn, okay? I was about to ask, do you burn? I mean, you're larger, so do you burn more? So it's typically 300 calories a day that you burn. Mm -hmm. In the first trimester, you want to eat about total for yourself and for your baby about 1,800 calories a day. It does go up, like you alluded mm -hmm. to, in the second trimester, 2,200 calories. Okay. And then the third trimester, about 2,400 calories. Okay. And not all in ice cream, I'm guessing. Oh. You can rack that up really fast. Yes, you can. So the recommendations for weight changes in pregnancy kind of depend upon how much you weighed when you got pregnant, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Yeah, and it is interesting because I was just... I've, I have read so much about this, which is probably dangerous. And I should also say right now, I always forget the introductions part, aside from giving names. Shelby, you are a doctor, or I should say Dr. Dickinson. You are a physician with Washington Call me Shelby, University. it's fine. Everybody else does too. Dr. Shelby, Dr. Dickinson, I respond We'll probably go with Dr. Shelby. I don't know. We'll see how, <laughs> we'll see we'll see how it rolls. Where it goes. I'm, yeah. I'm game. Um, but you are a WashU physician. You deliver mm -hmm. babies and mm -hmm. take care of women at Barnes Jewish Hospital. Yes, I do. And I work at St. Louis Children's Hospital in a non-clinical role. So I don't actually take care of the babies, but I see where they are all cared for very well on a daily basis. And some of your little ones wind up there as well. Yes. Uh-huh. They sure do. Terrific. Well, and I'm not the only one who's allowed to ask questions here either. By all means, please send us your questions. We will uh, we will get as many of them answered as we can live. And if there are any that we need to take offline, we can certainly do that as well. So keep that in mind as we're going. And back to the topic um, at hand on weight gain. Like I have been so paranoid just about how much, because there are some, I, I quote the apps and the websites.
websites all the time out there that give you pretty strict guidelines to adhere to as far as weight gain goes. And I will say I'm 17 weeks now, mm -hmm. and I am like nine and a half, ten pounds higher than where I was at my first doctor's appointment, mm -hmm. which was around seven, eight weeks. So I was fortunate mm -hmm. that I was never sick in the first trimester. Ugh. I know a so lot fortunate. of women, first mm -hmm. of all, women lose weight in they the first can. trimester. They can. Mm -hmm. And then do they do a lot of them gain it back? They do. They do gain it back. So typically what happens, you either in the first trimester have no weight gain or maybe just mm -hmm. a little bit, like five pounds. In the second and third trimester, you can increase that, or what we see, I should say, is that um, you may gain a half a pound to a pound a week mm -hmm. throughout the second and third trimester. What we really, really care about is making sure you don't gain too much weight because there are some bad outcomes associated with that. And you're gaining enough weight so that your baby doesn't grow small, mm -hmm. okay? Because we have seen like in third world countries where starvation is an issue, there's an increased risk of small babies, a lot of it having to do with malnutrition. In this country, we don't see that this yeah. often. It's more on the other, mm -hmm. uh, other spectrum of things where too much weight can actually be a problem too. And what does that, I mean, does it cause the, I'm trying to think of the best weight. It's a multi-part question here. It so is, it is. As far as weight gain goes right now, I mean, I'm not carrying 10 pounds of a baby. No, you're not. What, where is that all, I mean, I can tell you where it's going, but what, what is it? Why does it, I mean, why does your body need or want to gain that weight? Well, a lot of it has to do with the fluid. Mm -hmm. Even in the first trimester, the amount of fluid your body retains significantly increases. And the reason why is we have to circulate um, all the micronutrients and then also the calories to the baby and we do that via our blood volume. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of what you're experiencing is a uh, volume of fluid, mm -hmm. essentially, at this gestational age. Okay, and so then as you continue to go on with pregnancy, does, is it something that you need to worry about with the baby growing small but also growing large? With Weight gain? Yes, you're right. So there are some risks associated with too much weight gain in pregnancy. They include the following. Blood pressure conditions of pregnancy, uh, gestational diabetes or diabetes of pregnancy, large babies which have different uh, outcomes, okay, such as C-section. So there is an increased risk of C-section associated with too much weight gain. Mm -hmm. Um, those are the big ones. The other one that I think we don't think about, we're always so focused on the pregnancy. Postpartum, I mean yeah. the postpartum period, there is a lot of literature that shows that if you gain too much weight during a pregnancy, that you tend to hold on to that weight mm -hmm. afterward, which has long-term complications such as cardiovascular disease, so heart attack, stroke, diabetes. You gotta be alive to take care of everybody, mm -hmm. right moms? I mean. Yeah. Yeah, that you come in handy after the pregnancy too. It's not just carrying. You you do forget that. That's funny that you bring that up. And it's I guess it's called the fourth trimester for a very good reason. I mean, you all see that all the time that you don't yeah. stop. And my doctor went over that with us this last week too. Was your your care is not does not stop the day you deliver the baby. Nope. As your maternal maternity care goes well past that into yeah. all those postpartum visits. We say six weeks postpartum, but there's developing literature all the time that that physiology extends three months after delivery, six months after delivery. Mm -hmm. It's kind of been a focused field over the past several years. All right, and we'll get into the whole how you're supposed to eat when you're breastfeeding and postpartum and all of that eventually. Yes. But right now, <laughs> we'll go back to while pregnant. And yeah. Do you see the eating pattern, or did you experience that your eating pattern changed a whole lot when oh you're pregnant, my goodness what you wanted yeah sometimes that's the first clue you're pregnant yeah <laughs> where are those pickles at uh oh exactly. it's time to check a pregnancy <laughs> it's not just a myth they actually taste delicious no they do they're yeah. so salty yeah. you know some of that, that a lot of them are myths as to why we crave what we crave mm -hmm. okay i think personally it has a lot to do there's some physiology behind that your hormone levels really, really rise during pregnancy. So I think that is a trigger. The other thing too is that salty foods will help your body reabsorb water, but it's not 100%. People crave different things, depending on the pregnancy too, I should say. Were yours different? Oh, completely different. Really? I wonder if my husband will chime in on <laughs> Facebook. Adam, if you're listening, please say something nice.
nice. As I was saying, just be nice. Just be nice. That is just all. Just be nice. Yes. I'm still a little sensitive. Seven months out. Seven months out. Yeah, you're just postpartum. So, so um, my first pregnancy, Qdoba. This is no plug for Qdoba. Very <laughs> we, bad. We have, we have a history of plugging different things accidentally. So keep going. Okay. Go okay. Okay. Good. Um, pickles on everything mm -hmm. and they had to be schnooks pickles sliced dill the big jar yeah um well, that was my first pregnancy out. i know you can't run out that was my first pregnancy and then my second pregnancy which is very odd um fruit so hey I know. Good for you. I, was, I think I have a shirt that says, I want fruit, but the baby wants cake or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's <laughs> awesome that the baby wanted fruit, too. Baby run. He's, a little, he's a, little, a little bit smaller of a guy, but fruit was my big one in the second trimester. Um, and the other interesting thing is I can't drink coffee during pregnancy. Really? I'm a coffee drinker. I have to have at least two cups of coffee a day, mm -hmm. but when it comes to pregnancy, it's that's the other clue. Shelby doesn't want coffee. You better check a pregnancy test. Oh my gosh, yeah. how funny! And I don't really know the unless there's some sort of um, inherent aversion to mm -hmm. bitter taste associated with coffee. But that's really interesting. Coffee. So, and this is sort of a side note. But did you get if you're a two cup a day drinker? Did you get headaches whenever you went? I when did. you suddenly didn't like it anymore? I did initially. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had some withdrawal headaches, but. The aversion to it didn't matter, and you really get over it pretty quickly. I would say really it's usually do. a couple of days, and they're probably at that point you're you feeling don't kind feel of crummy to begin no. with. So you don't feel good, so you're yeah. you're eating other stuff, and you honestly don't notice it. And I will say, I had a very similar experience. Come to think of it, I was sick at the time. I had a cold, just a nasty, nasty cold at the time I found out I was pregnant. And I am a coffee first thing in the morning person, and it was really easy to decrease it down to half calf in less mm -hmm. because it was it just was completely unappealing the other thing I found that with and I assume I'm allowed to mention this but I love red wine and oh. the second I mean it was minutes after I found out I was pregnant I was just yeah. like mm. thank god I, I mean it, it was a nice thing to not want it because uh -huh. you can't have it yeah mm -hmm. but the smell even bothered me the smell of alcohol in general I thought was just oh awful. Only in the first trimester. I'm out of that now. Well, Shelby, your husband just chimed in. And <laughs> oh, said, no! Mm -hmm. You should have bought stock and Chinook sliced pickles. <laughs> he was right. He was right. <laughs> stock and Chinook sliced pickles. I wonder if they've got that. We'll have to look into it. Yeah, yeah that's I'm terrific. telling you. We'll tag <laughs> Chinooks in this afterwards. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I know. Chinooks pickles. They're cheap. Schnucks brand. <laughs> yes. Yeah, hey, it works out well. Store brand, whatever you can yeah. find, it works just fine. My standards, I, I've said that my thing is that my standards are no longer high. Like, I, I love food. I love gourmet food. Now, I want, of all random things, fried chicken, but not on the bone. Just fried, like, chicken filet. And um, I was eating it with mustard and pickles the other day, and I thought it was the most delicious thing in the world. And everyone at the table was looking at me like I had lost my sanity. And it still doesn't sound weird to me. It sounds delicious. Um, and what are we having for lunch today? Exactly. I don't eat fried chicken every day, I promise, but I did eat a donut this morning. I feel like I need to get the true confessions okay, out. Okay, finally, finally. Thank you. Yes, it's okay. I'm sorry. You'll, you'll be all right. You'll, you'll be, be all right. It was green. It was for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Someone brought them into the office. It was her fault, not mine. Um, but the, uh, and chocolate ice cream is the other thing, which I could mm, care less about. I don't know where those 10 pounds came from. I know, exactly. <laughs> where did they come from? Where did they go? No, I don't oh, buy it for the purpose of if it's in the fridge or in the freezer, I will eat it. And yeah. I mean, fried chicken does not darken our doorstep because I know it's bad for you. Mm -hmm. But if I, we were, we were out one night, I was like, Gally, that sounds delicious. And it was. Was. Oh, so. cinnamon toast crunch. That was the second one. I knew there was, and that was my second pregnancy. One, I was driving home, and one day it came to me like an epiphany. Uh huh. Cinnamon <laughs> toast crunch. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh my god. I had to have it routinely, routinely, and then after delivery, nah. Not interested anymore. Okay, I so hope you'll get over that. <laughs> do we have a question? Because I want yeah. I want women out there to text us or kind of pardon me, comment yeah, what here they, what they've been craving. craving. Because oh, I, I have one of those, but your husband also wrote in again to say <laughs> Tell that. Them to stop writing in. <laughs> I know I invited him. <laughs> oh, this is very nice. He didn't mind going out at three a.m. to get them for you either. Oh, so Aww. sweet. Tell them that the truth. Is that is so. Shoot. What a nice <laughs> husband. Yes. Okay, Jocelyn has a question okay. about red meat. She said, "When it comes to steak, can I have?" it medium rare my husband who's a chef says yes he says the bacteria lies on the surface of the steak and not inside yes so 
what she's alluding to is getting concerned about listeriosis mm -hmm. and eating raw meats. And I think it's okay as long as, just like what her husband said, is that the, if the bacteria is inside of the meat, there's probably something wrong with the meat. So I think it's completely safe. Cool. Now, as long as it's cooked, I wouldn't do rare, but I think a medium steak is fine. Medium rare? It depends on the temperature. Okay. And every place is different. Okay. So maybe if she's eating out, get it medium. Yeah. And if she's at home with her chef husband, yes. so he can mm -hmm. better understand, mm -hmm. do medium yeah. rare. Okay. It's probably. probably fine overall, but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a great segue into the whole what you can and can't eat yeah. conversation. No, and we had talked previously with Dr. Robbins mm -hmm. about um, you can eat the turkey. Mm -hmm. Do you feel the same way? I mean, it's it's the listeriosis that's the problem with all of the foods that, or a great many of the foods that yeah. we're told not to eat, correct? Mm -hmm. it's, it's because of that risk, which is actually really, really rare, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. It's the uncooked meats. It's the unpasteurized dairy. So that's the other thing, because I really like Gouda. Mm -hmm. Or not Gouda, um, feta. Feta. Gouda's fine, because it's... Wait, no, I'm sorry, feta's the problem. Well... It's pack. You have to make sure it's packed. Okay, I was gonna say it's. It came out of the plastic thing. At it. The that is store. pasteurized. I'm pretty confident that That's is all pasteurized. American right there. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. You're right. And the FDA's gotten a hold of it somewhere. I know. I know. It's okay. the make sure it's pasteurized. Sorry. You can buy non-pasteurized cheese at Whole Foods. Yes. yes. Regularly. Yes. So, I mean, that was the other thing I was. We were told very early is that um, you just have to check and make sure, and that a lot of restaurants, most restaurants, you're fine, but it's worth checking at some of just the asking. nicer places or more adventurous places, mm -hmm. let's say, mm -hmm. just to confirm that they are yeah, safe. Yeah, you're eat. right. So I'm sorry. It was the unpasteurized cheeses, um, deli meats. Mm -hmm. What else are the things that? are worthy of concern or at least a second look at the label. Yeah, uncooked sushi is the okay. other one for the same reasons as mentioned above. Just make sure that it's cooked. Okay, any, yes. Liz wrote in, she's having cravings for Smacks cereal. It's a daily staple. She oh, hasn't had it in 20 years, but now it's daily. <laughs> Smacks. Smacks. Oh, I, I forgot mean, I about that. I remember those commercials from when I was a kid. They were funny. Is that the, isn't it the frog? frog? I think it's the frog. Yeah, I keep yes. thinking of the frog. Okay, yes. smacks. Yes. It's amazing. That's amazing. That is so weird. A girlfriend of mine also had the cinnamon toast crunch thing, and I thought that sounded like a brilliant idea. I got some myself, and I was like, man, it's okay. It wasn't for you? It wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> fried chicken with pickles and mustard on it. <laughs> An ice cream. Exactly. Yeah. The chocolate ice cream. Yeah. Afterwards. Yeah, 10 pounds what? <laughs> um, so that is, so those are the foods you can't eat. As far as amount that you eat in the day, I, I've noticed it's like, a different um, pattern mm -hmm. of food. I mean, I used to be able to be just fine eating breakfast, lunch, and if I was busy in the afternoon, I'd make it to dinner just fine. Yeah. Now, it is every two hours. You need that constant caloric source, mm -hmm. okay? Um, a lot of patients will get real nauseated if mm -hmm. they don't have a little something on their stomach. Yes. And honestly, if you eat big meals, like a big breakfast, a big lunch, a big dinner, that can also be a little unsettling on your stomach as well. Well, and that was the thing that I learned just about myself early on was that it, I, I don't know if it's you're running out of space or if it's heartburn or what exactly, but mm -hmm. I couldn't, I, I, I was raised with three brothers, so I eat meals quickly because you oh, ate and yes. you protected it. I think there's a whole psychology behind this, at least one that I've developed with absolutely no, no authority. <laughs> <laughs> but, if, but I have continued that unfortunate pattern to this day, and I will say I can't do it right now. Like I can eat a certain amount and know that I just have to stop because two hours later, mm -hmm. okay, first of all, I'm going to be really uncomfortable very quickly, mm -hmm. and then two hours later, I'm going to want something else. Like yeah. It just is the way it is. So there are two factors to mm -hmm. that. In the beginning and now, um, your GI system slows because of the progesterone. I think that's a component of that now. Um, but then as your pregnancy progresses and your uterus grows and that baby grows, mm -hmm. I mean, literally, there's only so much room in there. Mm -hmm. And so that starts playing a bigger part as your pregnancy progresses. So it's a factor of two things. And your GI system slows, does your metabolism speed up? I mean, how does that, how's that impact? No, your metabolism does speed up. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I think in my mind, I think it slows. You can get as much caloric intake as you mm -hmm. can from the foods that you eat. It seems that way from like an evolutionary or a anthropologic um, perspective, but um the your metabolism does increase and hence the extra 300 calories mm -hmm. a day that you need um, to help support the pregnancy okay 
And if, just to put 300 calories in perspective, I was looking up different 300 calorie snacks, and it's like an apple with two tablespoons of peanut butter. That's and it. That's it in a day. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. It that, is. I mean, that's only calories. Remember, you also gain fluid, which is mm -hmm. from the water that you drink, to help circulate the nutrients and the oxygen to the, the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And is there, do you, and I have only had this experience a couple of times myself, but did you experience at any point with your pregnancy, did you wake up at night hungry? Apparently there's a 3 a.m. run to the grocery store, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that other than for cinnamon toast crunch, that uh -huh. wasn't that that wasn't my big thing. Uh -huh. But I have many patients and many women who will wake up hungry mm -hmm. in the middle of the night, and then they start looking, what can I eat? What can I eat? Mm -hmm. That was the first, I, the, it's only happened to me a couple of times, yeah. but the first time I did it, it was so bad because it was like, oh my gosh, and it was first trimester, and I just thought, I'm so, I, I can't figure out, there's something wrong with my stomach, and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm hungry. I don't think I've been hungry, hungry since, enough. I don't know, 1992, I don't let myself get hungry. I no. know. I know, yeah, exactly. It was, it's just so funny, it's such an odd sensation, but the, I mean, I went up, went, went downstairs, got... A sandwich and what peanut butter and jelly sandwich and went back to bed. That's totally fine. Yep. It's so wild. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, your food pattern intake changes a little bit. Does it? Um, do you expect that things will evolve over the course of a pregnancy? Do you see that? Oh and yeah. How do they change? I would say first trimester patients fall into a couple of categories. I feel fine. I don't feel mm -hmm. pregnant. And then you have those that feel terrible can't tolerate foods, and they need a little bit more extra support. And then you have others that um, have to eat all day, all the time, just mm -hmm. small meals constantly. Otherwise, they start feeling sick, so it's kind of the opposite. They need food to prevent them from feeling sick, mm -hmm. whereas you have some patients that can't even eat food because then they'll they'll get well, sick. It was so interesting, and I think we're three for three on me bringing up my sister-in-law, or one of my sisters-in-law in these episodes that... Um, she was sick and I, I just do it because I look back at this now and I think she has got to be some sort of saint for having gone through what she did but she was sick from week 6 to week 36 and but she was saying the other day that she still gained more than she wanted to in the pregnancy and I was like how is that possible you were sick the entire time and she said because all I could eat was carbs and cheese yeah and so I did and so you, you do what you yeah. have to do mm -hmm. I do agree with that you do what you have to do are there any things, any any restrictions you would put on people just in the sense that, okay, say you come in with unique dietary situations to be in with, vegetarians, yeah. vegans, mm -hmm. um, people who have gluten aversions, whether they are physical aversions or um, just prefer not to eat gluten, what are the regulations that you give them? We'll start, we should probably take them one by one. Yeah, take they're, they're a little bit different. different. Yeah. Okay, so vegetarians. <laughs> Can you be a vegetarian through pregnancy? Yes, you can be a vegetarian okay. through pregnancy. Here are the micronutrients you need to really focus on and make sure you get enough of. So calcium, okay, calcium is very important for developing baby. They have bones, they have teeth that need that calcium. They will take it, that baby will take it from you. <laughs> so make sure you get enough calcium. Um, but a lot of vegetarians will still have dairy. The problem is when you take out that dairy, and we'll talk about vegans here in a second. Mm -hmm. But um, calcium is very important. Um, the next is iron, so which is probably even bigger for vegetarians, but um, iron is really important. But there are foods that aren't meats that you can get your iron um, stores from because you need about um, 27 milligrams a day of iron in pregnancy, which is about the double of somebody who's mm -hmm. not pregnant. Okay. Um, and some things that they can, beans, legumes. And can you get that from a vitamin? You can. I mean, you is can. It the same, is it the same quality that you're going to get from food? No, foods tend to, um, you tend to tolerate it better from foods than you do from a vitamin. And But mm -hmm. vitamins are helpful. Uh, one of the things I recommend is taking vitamin, uh, taking foods with vitamin C in them, like orange juice, if you're trying to supplement with iron. Okay. Or if you're eating foods that are high in iron that are plant-based to help really absorb that iron that's in those foods. Red meat, our bodies have a really great ability of absorbing the iron in them. And so that's not as problematic for people who, who eat meats. 
Now we talked about vegan, vegan. vegetarian, and um, the vegans. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, vegans. I get a little bit more concerned about because they lack that calcium and then that iron that they need. And so, a real if they could add something to their diet. Um, and sometimes we have to coordinate with a dietitian to help them do that. Even supplementation mm-hmm. would be um, sufficient. And say, so is that something whenever you see a patient for the first time, is that a good idea to bring up with your doctor if you have any? I mean, if you are a vegan, if you are a vegetarian, oh, those yeah. kind of things, you I definitely need to identify would. that right away. Yeah, I definitely would. Every now and again, we don't do, um, ACOG doesn't re- recommend routine testing of vitamin D in all women, but if you have somebody who's at risk of having low vitamin D, um, that's something that, uh, that's a part of the history we could get from you that would be important. We could check and see if you do need some supplementation. And ACOG is? A uh, great question. American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists. They tell me what to do. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say I know the American Academy of Pediatrics. That's the one. There you go. They tell you what to do. Yes, <laughs> but so you are. I mean, do you are are they updating regularly their recommendations and what they see out there as best practices? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, the third one I think we were gonna talk about was gluten free. Gluten free shouldn't be a problem. Avoiding gluten, a lot of carbs, that's stuff we really don't need anyway. We have a little bit too much Mm -hmm. in our diet. So gluten diets generally are not a problem. You need that iron, you need that calcium. In terms of what kinds of foods you're eating, you know, breakdown of carbs, protein, and fat in a day, do your needs change at all? Throughout pregnancy? Yes. Um, I would say that you may need more because that caloric intake increases. Uh, But proportionally one more than the other? Not necessarily. Okay. So it's just whatever gets you through to the end of the day. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's um, that's food, which mm-hmm. is an all important topic. The next one, that is also just as important though not as much fun to talk about, uh, is exercise. Oh, before we go yeah. to exercise yeah. though, I forgot one important micronutrient: folic acid. Oh my gosh! <laughs> How did we leave that out? I'm so sorry. Uh, it is. We're talking about yummy foods. And, and, and you know what? It's so funny because at this last appointment was the one where my doctor was asking about the spina bifida testing. So the reason yes, for, for yeah. folic acid, and can you tell us a little bit about what it is and why we need it? Yeah, yeah. So folic acid is found in a lot of green leafy vegetables. And prenatal vitamins, the biggest thing, there are a couple of things that are different from prenatal vitamins and multivitamins, but the biggest thing is the amount of folic acid they have mm-hmm. in it, which is more than just a regular multivitamin. Typically, prenatal vitamins have about one milligram of folic acid, which is a little bit more than what you need, which is fine. Um, The guidelines include uh, taking in 600 micrograms of folic acid a day. So by taking a prenatal vitamin, you'll get that supplementation. You need it because there's an increased risk of spina bifida or spinal cord malformations. Um, in people who lack folic acid. And so that's why we do encourage women to supplement with it. Even before pregnancy, because Mm -hmm. that spinal cord forms before you find out you're pregnant. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so, um, which is pretty, pretty some interesting embryology. Regardless, three months before you attempt pregnancy, you should be taking a prenatal vitamin, at least three months. Is there any harm in women taking a folic acid supplement in addition or or involved in folic acid in their daily vitamin intake before they ever even think about getting pregnant? Or is it something that you just, that is just for? Um, there, you can take it, mm-hmm. but a lot of what happens a lot of times people get sick of taking more and more pills oh, whenever yeah. they're, but yeah, if you want to take it whenever you're um, not contemplating pregnancy, that's completely safe and completely fine. Mm-hmm. Um, any reproductive women who aren't using any form of birth control should consider taking enough folic acid in case they do become pregnant hmm. so that's so interesting I didn't re- I didn't realize that the spinal cord was formed before you ever knew you were pregnant yeah, I know that's it's already pretty determined. amazing that mm-hmm. is, that is we amazing. don't see it until later uh-huh. but a lot of those things have already happened in that time period there have been other things that have shown um, an increased risk of the spinal cord malforming so like hot tubs like uh-huh. hot like not like my shower's hot, but like a hot tub that's 100 degrees that you get mm-hmm. into, that's been associated with it as well. And women who have a history of that, so let's say they had a pregnancy with some sort of spinal cord malformation, or if they're on anti-seizure meds, because that can lower the amount of folic acid mm-hmm. in your body, they should actually take even more. They should take about four milligrams 
And is that something you recommend people talk to their own doctors about? Right? Oh, definitely. Like, oh, yeah. oh, interesting. All right, and so that is, now that's an even better segue, because when you mentioned the hot tubs, I think this does fall. It, there are so many things that we can talk about. What can we do? What can we not do? Are we restricted? Under the heading, especially, of exercise, and no, sitting on a hot tub is not exercise, but it's related to some things that uh, could be. Yeah. For example, if you go skiing, and then you get in a hot tub afterwards, first of all, can you ski pregnant? No. So sad. Sorry. Why is that? Well, there are two reasons. Mm -hmm. The first reason is you want to avoid contact sports. Mm -hmm. And skiing is kind of a physically demanding contact sport. Not necessarily physically demanding part of it, but it's the part of trauma or injury. You could easily fall over and hurt your abdomen or your belly. I will say, I've only been skiing one time, and skiing is a loose word. I went to ski school for one day. And I was asking the group I was with on the way up the slopes, how do you stop? And they said, what do you mean, how do you stop? I was like, well, I mean, if you're going to come at something, how do you, you stop? Just and they're like, you'll stop. You'll figure it out. They will teach you how to stop, but trust us, you'll figure it out. Yes, you figure it out. You throw yourself into the side of the mountain. It's just, and by the side of the mountain, I mean the bunny slopes. It was not that big of by any chance. <laughs> but there were 18 month olds, and I'm not kidding, there was one 18 month old that just <laughs> slid right by me on skis. But I mean, you just Dangerous. You intentionally knock yourself to the ground. Yeah. And I don't know, I mean, if, at what point this becomes a real problem. It isn't a huge problem now. I will say I bump into things more often because I think as your body starts to change and you're not fully aware of... Oh, you're totally right. Yeah. I mean, mean, this is the center of gravity. It changes. It changes. Yeah, let me show you. Let me show you. (laughs) Can I show them? Yes. All right, do you need a second demo or are we going to... Or can I just watch from afar? You can just watch from afar. All right, I will watch from afar. So, I have kind of bad posture, but um, typically when you're not pregnant, you have uh, this posture where your uh, spine is a little bit curved on both up here and back here. What happens with pregnancy, your center of gravity changes. Mm -hmm. You're starting to carry what's going to become a watermelon. And you (laughs) develop what we call lordosis. So it's physiologic, it's normal, but basically this curve right here really accentuates. And that's why sometimes pregnant women looks like they're waddling they have to change their center of gravity back here because they're carrying a watermelon here. Mm -hmm. And so this curvature in their spine changes and their ribs will also move up. Their heart will move up as well as the pregnancy progresses. (laughs) But that center of gravity changes. And so because of it, they walk a little funny. They may waddle Mm -hmm. side to side. But in addition to that, they're prone to falling. They're really prone to falling. So having good shoes, these are not good shoes, but I am not (laughs) pregnant. They're very cute shoes. They're very cute shoes, but um, having a nice solid tennis shoe of trying to avoid flip-flops. If you can, we're getting on summer now. Everyone loves their flip-flops. But um, a nice supportive shoe like a tennis shoe is really helpful because you're prone to falling. And if you're prone to falling, you're prone to injuring your belly. So that's essentially why skiing um, for two aspects isn't helpful because you're prone to you're moving very fast and prone to hitting your belly But also your center of gravity changes you don't have as good of a balance and you really need that to ski But what about um, so I mean another sport that I would think like riding a bike because you could fall riding a bike is that is hazardous um, I would say oh, sorry. Oh, sorry my notes here. We're no, that's okay. We're, yeah. Um, yeah, it is okay because Once again, riding a bike, you have your own center of gravity, which you're going to have to change. And in addition to it, balance it on a bike. So if anything, I'd recommend a stationary bike Mm -hmm. where you have a little bit more support. And you're not likely to have a dog bolt or a squirrel right in front of you. Oh, and then you're, yeah, and then you're going at higher rates of speed. Mm -hmm. But exercise is good. We're talking, and I did, I was going to say, I shouldn't have started with the what you can't can't do. do. Yeah, that's that's the the rule of the things you you should always start with the positive. So Mm -hmm. um, I I will say I had a friend who was on a spin bike from, I mean, up until I think she was eight months pregnant. Okay. And it's. It, she said, my doctor said I can keep doing what I did before. I mean, is that the general rule or is there, what What do you recommend? A spin bike. Like a stationary, stationary bike. Oh, yes, yes, so yes, yes. Is, Sorry, like, sorry, sorry, more. sorry. I mean, I was amazed because it's intense when you're not pregnant and I get really winded now. Oh. I can't even imagine trying to keep up the intensity of a sport like that yeah. um, for any duration of time. But, I mean, she was, she was in 
incredibly fit to be. Oh with yeah, uh-huh. and would do that on a routine basis. And she said, I just kept going, and I never needed to stop. Yeah. So, so I guess I should have. I I um, didn't quite understand what you were asking me before. A bicycle. I was asking about a bicycle. Okay. So, okay. No, I was asking about something you could fall off. Of. Yes. Yes. A yes. stationary. So I just sorry. In my mind, I moved to stationary bike, but I didn't okay. say that out loud. Okay. Yes. So a stationary bike is fine. There are a couple mm-hmm. of things though. If do what you can. So you should be able. You shouldn't be able to sing when you exercise, but you should be able to talk. Okay. Okay. Um, making sure it's not too hot. So um, I don't know if they do just like the hot yoga and hot Pilates. I don't know if they do hot spinning. I don't think so. But just just <laughs> by its very nature, pretty hot and gross. Yeah, I know it is. It is. So you know, making sure that you're in a temperature controlled room, mm-hmm. which you generally are mm-hmm. when you're spinning or or an, on a stationary bike, I should say. Um, the only thing I get a little concerned about is because of our anatomy and our pelvises. You may notice increased pelvic or pain from that position. Okay, uh, pelvic, uh, from what position? Uh, riding a stationary oh, okay. bike. Okay. But if you don't, it should be fine. And when you say pelvic floor pain, yeah. what is what is it? Yeah. And, or do you just know it when you feel it? And do you, no, you don't know. Yeah. Your doctor, if you experience, I mean, what is, can you, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. There what is it? Let's back, let's back up. It? What yeah. is it? So your, pel- your, your pelvis, the bottom part of your hips um, it basically has an intricate musculature that sometimes with stationary bikes leaves us a little um, restricted and can cause a little bit more strain on those muscles that they attach to your hips, they um, attach to the front of your pelvis, they get a lot of pressure on them from a growing pregnancy. Mm-hmm. In addition, they can cause your vagina to hurt. Oh my goodness! And <laughs> I heard I can say vagina, right? Yes. I can say vagina, right? Okay, good, good, good. You can say whatever okay. you want. Okay. Yeah. So, but so, yeah. You, so, I mean, if you experience that kind of pain, what do you do? You need to call the doctor, check on it. I mean, what exactly are the symptoms that you need? To yeah. Take so, I would just discuss with your doctor: is it because of the pressure of the of the growing pregnancy in general, or could it be some pelvic floor dysfunction? And there are physical therapists out there that can work with patients that do have some problems with their pelvic floor muscles. That is, and they are specifically. Yes, is that? I mean, those physical therapists specifically work with women on pelvic yeah. floor issues. I did not mm-hmm. realize that. Was yes, they are. Yes, it is a thing. It is a thing. Okay, so um, we've talked about different kinds of classes, but general rule: what do you tell patients when they come into you for their first appointment and they say, "Well, I mean, I'd like to keep exercising." What is your response? Continue. Okay. Do what you're doing. Just nothing hot, too hot. Um, no contact sports. Do what you can, and you're going to notice as the pregnancy changes, you may feel a little bit limited, okay? And that's okay, but continue to exercise. Exercise is super important. It's helpful for the labor process, Mm -hmm. um, and it's also helpful in keeping you from gaining too much weight during a pregnancy. That's so interesting that you talk about helping during the labor process. I know that there there has been at least the perception in the world at some point or another that you should be very calm and laid back and not doing any major activity when you're pregnant. However, it does seem a little counterintuitive when really you are nine months gearing up for one heck of a game. Oh, that's true. And Mm -hmm. your body needs to be prepared. Uh So are there things that you can do to best prepare your body to be in optimal physical shape for labor? Is that a thing? So we don't have a lot of research into it, but anecdotally I can tell you that women that stay physically fit during their pregnancy tend to tolerate labor much better than women that don't. Um, Because if you don't, you tend to gain weight and you put yourself at risk of other complications that we talked about earlier. Um, But I would say just keeping your overall health and not feeling like you have to be a bump on the log Mm -hmm. is most important. And we had talked, I know, Dr. Robinson had mentioned previously, uh, Pilates is fine. I, I do a workout called BAR, and it's it's a combination of yoga and Pilates, and it's not it's very low impact. Yeah. And I had asked one of the instructors early on, "Do I need to avoid anything?" She said, "Well, you know, you're not supposed to be flat on your back after 20 weeks, mm-hmm. but really, your body is going to tell you what it can and cannot do. Otherwise, you're fine. And there are certain, mm-hmm. I mean, you can't. It's it's." Definitely already awkward to twist yeah. certain ways, mm-hmm. 
but it's so so it's so true that you're right. Your body does kind of give you some indication. Mm-hmm. You're totally you right. To stop. You'll know when you can't do something, or you you don't feel good. So if you lay on your back for a long period mm-hmm. of time, you may feel nauseated. You may feel a little dizzy. You may start breathing heavier. Um, if you stand for long periods of time, you may feel a little dizzy as well because mm-hmm. sometimes fluid can collect in your legs and it needs to come back up. So. So one question that was submitted earlier in advance for this is what about like CrossFit and lifting weights and sit-ups and pull-ups? Oh, that's a good those question. Are things that are kind of well, a myth CrossFit, busters. yeah, and there are some uh-huh. of those, what are the high-intensity interval training type mm-hmm. workouts that are really hot right now in mm-hmm. studios? Hot as in trendy. Yeah, yeah. No, not, not uh, temperature Temperature wise. hot. Uh-huh. Yeah, air conditioning. <laughs> uh-huh. The one thing I get concerned about lifting heavy weights would include um, dropping something on your belly, losing any sort of balance. Um, Pull-ups should be fine. Um, Sit-ups should be fine. Um, But they're going to become harder to do as that pregnancy progresses. I was, I, that's my next question, too. About, I mean, it just seems counterintuitive that you could do a crunch when you're pregnant. Yeah. Uh-huh. But you kind of can. You kind of can, Yeah. Okay. Um, it, you may not be able to towards the end because your rectus muscle really gets stretched mm-hmm. out, but in the beginning you can, and it's perfectly safe. And are there? I've I've seen people who wear um, they're like support bands underneath. Is what is that? And do you recommend that? Oh, do they help? Oh yeah. Even without exercise, it's really really helpful. You can imagine, like I showed you guys earlier, you start carrying this watermelon. Your muscles and your ligaments have to accommodate this watermelon, mm-hmm. so you can imagine everything gets stretched out. And as everything starts leaning forward, a pregnancy belt can really help you uh, support that extra weight, especially whenever you're exercising. It's just like the Weight Watchers, only a little bit different. It is just like <laughs> And the, um, the, the thing that you're talking about, the back curving in, is that what leads to the back pain early on too? Okay. Yeah, yeah. In addition to that, your pelvis is made of three different bones that relax because of hormones that your body makes. Mm-hmm. And that relaxing of those hips can also cause pain too, but you're right. And does exercise, can it hurt that, can it aggravate it further or does it tend to help it? I mean, it tends it, to help, okay. to be honest with you, depending on what you're doing though. That everybody's is, body's a little bit different. A friend of mine was saying, cause it was the first trimester and, and still a little bit now, but being so exhausted and trying to avoid that late afternoon caffeine run, mm-hmm. um, someone said, just go for a walk. It'll help. And it does. I mean, it, yeah. it it doesn't help as much as coffee, people. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. But it does get your blood moving a little bit better. Yeah. And it, that seemed, again, on the counterintuitive scale to be kind of on there. As did, because I've started to experience a little bit of low back pain. It's not it's not horrible. It's not unbearable. But it's annoying. Oh, yeah. And it's It's painful. Stretching. No, it's going to get Helps. worse. It's oh, painful. Yeah, that's what, oh, yeah. I was told, yeah, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. I mean, so many of my complaints now, everybody just giggles and says, oh, yeah. You're, you're interrupting. But, <laughs> but it's fine. very important well, to you, and you're feeling and, that now. And I feel bad even, and I said this in our first episode, too. You feel bad complaining about it, and I want to say I'm not complaining. No, it, it, you're I, Experience but it. You're experiencing it. Especially when we're talking like this every week. I'm, I feel compelled to highlight every single minute experience. So please, no, I don't whine all the time. I try and just <laughs> save that for my husband. Um, so that and the ice cream runs. Um, but the the um, just a little bit of exercise can help boost your energy. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And if you need a little topper with a coffee, it's okay. Yeah. That is, I've, I've heard the same thing as well, and I, there, has, there has been coffee in my day the last couple of days. <laughs> so I, I cannot tell a lie. Uh, are there any other tips or tricks that you would give women as it relates to diet and exercise in pregnancy? Well-balanced diet. We talked about a little bit of the nuances, but a well-balanced diet, okay. Um, weight, too much weight gain can be um, not as good as too little. Mm-hmm. So that's equally as important as your. Where do you draw the line of too much? And I know it oh. depends on where somebody starts. Yeah, it does depend on where somebody starts. So if you're looking at somebody who's underweight, mm-hmm. um, typically they can gain up to 40 pounds in a pregnancy. Okay. Anywhere from 28 to 40. If somebody who's obese, um, typically, their weight gain should a goal would be like eleven to twenty pounds. Really? Yeah. And your body can sustain 
just based on what it yeah. has there. Mm-hmm. And then your average pregnancy is what? Your average pregnancy for somebody who's of normal weight uh-huh. is 25 to 35 pounds. Okay. So EPF will not check. But these are, right. yeah, I know. Got it. <laughs> but, Duly noted. <laughs> but these are for patients who have just one, one yes. singleton pregnancy. Yes. Very, very smart to point that out because mm-hmm. there are some that carry two or more. We, we see many multiples around yeah. here. Yes, we do. Uh, I can't even imagine. I don't even want to imagine. Don't. That sounds terrifying right now. But for all of you who are experiencing the joy of getting ready to welcome two, three, or four babies, we're really excited for you. Yes, yes. That would be great. Um, we promise. So any other, anything else you'd, you'd add? Just stay healthy. Exercise is okay. Eating a well-balanced meal. Make sure you're getting plenty of water and plenty of sleep. And this will really tip you off to the rest of um, enjoying the time, enjoying your baby. Mm-hmm. And say it keeps it keeps you healthy for long not term. only the duration of the pregnancy, but for that time period right yeah. after the kid comes when you want to at least yeah, be exactly. present and physically able to enjoy it as much as possible. Exactly. Well, Dr. Shelby, thank yeah, you so no problem. much for joining us. And your thanks, husband guys. as well. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Adam. Thank you for joining us. I Fail to look at the topic list. I think next week we're talking about what tests to expect in the duration of a pregnancy. So um, the, there's one of the, sorry, I cannot hold a sentence together today. The gestational diabetes test is, yeah, which one? The glucose, the, the one you were drinking the syrup? Yeah, yeah. So that one is typically 24 to 28 re- weeks. And if you have risk factors, they may do it in the first trimester. Okay, so there's a preview of the fun in store for next week. Join us next Friday. Thanks so much. Thanks.